Hi, Elaine here. Today, I'll be sharing how to create legal or lined notes pages in Affinity Publisher. This is the layout we'll be creating. It's a customizable notes page. Customizable in terms of the colors, the line height, the margin widths and the margin colors. This is the initial document setup. I've gone for A4. I'm going to leave the number of pages set to eight with facing pages starting on the right. Because it's for digital output, I've gone with RGB. The margins I've set to inner 10, outer 10, a top margin of 20 and a zero bottom margin. Again, because it's digital, I don't need a bleed. And hit create. First, how not to do it. In fact, more than one way of how not to do it. You may be tempted to use lines and then power duplicate them. Let's try that and see why it's not a good idea. So clicking the pen tool and moving across to my page, click to create the first point, hold the shift key down, move across to the other margin and click and I have a line. If I don't do anything else and I move down to create the second line and I click, you'll see that I get a connecting line between the second position I clicked and this third one. Holding the shift key down and moving across to the right, I create my second line. That's the first way not to do it. Let's delete that and start again. Still using the pen tool, there is an option with the pen tool. The default mode is pen mode, but there is a line mode and that works slightly better for what we're trying to do here. It's still not the best way, but let's give it a go. So click for the first time, move across to the right hand side and click again. When I move down to the second line this time and click, there is no connecting line between point two and point three, because what this is allowing me to do is to create individual self-contained lines. It is a better option using the line mode than using the pen mode, but we would still need to power duplicate to create the additional lines. And you'd probably then need to look to distribute those lines equally using the space vertically option in the alignment options. Not bad, but no T-shirt, as we say here in the UK. So let's move on to the second way of doing it. For this, I'm deleting that second line, but I'm leaving the first line. I'm going to apply a stroke to that so we can see it. So let's make the stroke much thicker. The second option is with the move tool selected, press enter, which gives us the move duplicate dialog box. This is much more precise. It has the benefit of immediate precision using a single source line, which at the moment is at the top of that page. I would need to change the vertical position for this. So let's put eight millimeters and it looks like that's actually moved it downwards. And that's because at the moment we haven't told it that we want duplicates. Putting a tick in the duplicate box and then altering the number of copies means we have lines very precisely. And clicking OK, we have all our lines. Still no T-shirt. Let's go for option three. So Command and A to select all of that lot and delete it. Option three is the charm, and that is to use a table. Selecting my table tool, moving across to my document. I know I'm going to need here three columns. So I'll pull out to get three columns and I'm going to go for 28 rows. Now I can either be precise here. So I've got W for the width, H for the height, C for the number of columns and R for the number of rows. But if you can't be that precise, you do have the other options of using the arrows where you can either type in or use the up and down arrows. But that is the right number of cells for this example. It isn't, however, in the right place. So getting the move tool, I'm going to move that up to the very top corner of the page. Now, you might be wondering why I've bothered with margins if this table is going to cover the entire page. But it's because I want the top cell to be just over double the height of all the other cells at 20 millimeters. And I have a margin on the left set to 10 and a margin on the right set to 10. So it made sense to set the margins up. Scaling the rest of that table and it's in position. But the sizes aren't right yet. So what I'm going to do is go into the table, drag column A back to 10 millimeters, grab the right hand edge of column B, 
and pull that over to 10 millimetres from the right hand side. Now I mentioned that row one needs to be double the height. If I do what I've just done, which is pull it down, it does something different with rows than it does columns. So pulling this down, it will let me make that 20 millimetres, but now my table is hanging off the end. So I'm going to undo that. The best way to do this when it's rows you're working with is to hover over the edge of the row, hold the shift key down and pull down. And that has just twanged to 20 millimetres. It does give me one row that's very narrow, but it is still there. If I'm precise, I can select that. And with it selected, I'm holding the shift key down and I'm selecting the last row. Then right click on it and select to evenly distribute the rows. That will resize them all so rows 2 to 28 are equal in height. And I have my 20 millimeter row as well. The next task is to format this. What I'm going to do is move to the swatches panel and I do have a palette that I intend to use. So importing a palette as a document palette and it's my legal notes palette. There are four global colours in here, lines, notes, background and a margin for the left and a margin for the right. Let's format it in that order. So I'm selecting the entire table. I'm then using the table panel, which is available from window down to table and table panel or table formats. I've got both of those showing. In here, I need to make sure that I have no border on the outside. At the moment, it's the default of black 0.5. I'm going to make sure in there that there is no border on the outside. Although it doesn't look any different, trust me, it's gone. So making sure that again, it's all selected. I now need to make sure that the inside borders. So I've selected the inside borders are a gray color. So I'm going to my swatches and I have a global color called lines and I do want them to be 0.5. So that's absolutely correct. Clicking away and it has actually done that. You may be looking at that and thinking that there's something odd there. But what it is, is the margin showing through. So if I zoom out to the whole thing and use my option here to preview, toggle the preview mode, it isn't that any of those borders are any thicker than the others. It's just that the margins were showing. At this point, we don't really need to see the margins anyway. So going back into here, making sure I have the whole selection, I'm going to apply a fill color to this, which is the notes background. And then I need to make sure that the left hand margin is a red color and the right hand margin is a blue color. To do that, I'm selecting column B. Then within my stroke and fill section in the borders, I'm selecting just the left hand edge. You know which is going to be impacted because it highlights it in blue. I don't want this to be gray. I want it to be the margin left color and 0.5 is absolutely fine. That has formatted that. Without deselecting it, I can now format the right hand margin. By selecting right in the border options, it's telling me it's grey at the moment. I want it to be blue and we're done. Clicking away, you can now see we have the left hand margin as red and zooming into the right hand side, we have the right hand margin as blue. If you intend to have this on multiple pages, then the next thing to do is go to the pages. I have it on page one. It would make sense to add it to a master page. So selecting the table and edit, cut or command and X or control and X on Windows. Double click on your master page, paste to paste it in, paste to paste it in a second time and then move that second copy over to the other page. Within a couple of seconds, you can see that rippling through to all of the pages that have that master page applied to them. And this master page was the default master page and it's called master A. Now, making changes to this, because that was the reason that we used a table. The first thing I'm going to change is the background color. And because we used a global color, I can go in and edit that fill. And the color I'm going to set it to is a green color, C6, F2. C A. Again, it takes a second or so to ripple through, but all of those are updated with the new background color. Next thing to change 
I may want one of these to have a different margin position. So double clicking so I've got my table tools, hovering over that and moving it in so that is set to 20 millimetres and making the one on the right hand side 15 millimetres. You'll notice now it's on a master page, you would need to do that to both of them. However, it's obviously faster if you just delete one, copy and paste the other one and move it into position. If you want to take the time, you could make a symbol out of that. Now, the other change you may want to make is the number of rows that are available on each notes page. You have a couple of ways of doing this. One option is to click anywhere in the table, selecting a row. So I'll just randomly pick row 14. Right click and say insert row. It will insert an extra row and you will see that it makes the table taller at the bottom. It's only inserting one row at a time though. So yes, you can do that multiple times and you do get the extra rows. You would then have to scoot this up so it fits the page. The benefit of doing it that way is that the additional rows already have matching format with what we already have. There is a faster way to add additional rows to our table, which would be to use the arrows at the bottom. So at the moment we have 31. Let's change that to 35 and OK. We'll still need to scoot this up and initially it'll look all right. But when you click away from the table, the additional rows that you've added are not formatted. So while it takes a little bit longer to add the rows one at a time, they do have formatting applied. What you would need to do here is reapply your chosen formatting to those additional rows. Obviously, if you're thinking ahead, you could have created a table format and then you could reapply that. But we're going to have to do it manually here because we didn't do that. So I'm selecting the cells that are missing the formatting. Using the table panel, the fill is correct. What we need is that the inside borders are grey. So our lines colour at 0.5. We would then need to select the cells in column B, set the left hand border for the left margin and then the right hand border for the right margin. When we click away now, it's formatted. So let's have a quick recap. We discounted using the pen tool to draw the lines and then power duplicate to lay them out. We also discounted using the move duplicate dialog box to lay out the lines. What we did use was a table. The one I created had three columns and 28 rows. In terms of formatting, I removed all the default borders and then added grey to all of the inside borders and that was for the lines. Then I added a red border to the left side of column B and a blue border to the right side of column B and they represented the margins on the left and the right. If you intend to have more than a single legal notes or lined notes page, add the table to a master page and all the formatting was applied using global colours. And that meant updating the global colour updated all the elements where the colour is applied. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com VIP. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss future tutorials. And if you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and see you next time. <music>